Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I am here in Toronto at the Stage 10 Studios. We want to begin by thanking everyone for being here um, and that we're just waiting just a sec, sorry, uh, for more people to roll in. Um, but yeah, this is going to be all about live commerce. We're going to be demystifying live commerce. Um, and introducing two very special people. One first is Dave Lazar, the CEO of Stage 10. Uh, and second is Brittany Valdez. Uh, she is the co-founder of Mom Economy. I'll go into a little bit about their bio first, then we'll discuss you know, why live commerce is here to stay, then the importance of building an authentic audience. And then third and last, um, or third will be the shows that we've held and the successes that um, we've learned from them. And last will be the Q&A. So, but we encourage comments throughout. So throughout, if you have anything you want to ask, please, we have moderators in the chat um, and those questions will come to us. And yeah. Um, so first we have Dave, Dave Lazar. Dave has been advancing the state of the art in digital media throughout his career, an interactive content pioneer and software entrepreneur Dave is the, co is the founder of Stage 10, CEO now, um, and is leading deals with many large publishing companies, record companies, um, and has learned a lot from as well from watching this grow over the last five to 10 years, as, as well as from China. Second, we have Brittany Valdez. Um, Brittany has worked at high growth startups where she saw firsthand the importance of scalable systems. In 2015, she launched a 501c three online and offline platform for working moms to thrive called the mom economy. It's a creative incubator for mothers who work, entrepreneurs, business owners, and corporate employees all coming together for a common purpose, workforce development for mothers. Hi, Dave. Hey, Hi, Thanks, Rita. Thank you. So to begin this off, um, I'd like to ask Dave first, um, so, Dave, why is live commerce here to stay? Well, um, first of all, thank you for, for uh, setting me up and the kind intro. Um, li live video commerce is uh, here to stay for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, it's, it's a true way to actually uh, take one of the biggest downsides of e-commerce, which is that lack of direct connection between um, vendor and consumer, um, uh, to break down that barrier where you can actually talk to someone when, when you're making a purchase. The second is it, it actually represents the, um, the, the, the next generation of um, uh, ways to monetize uh, interactive content. So if, if we're coming from a um, landscape where um, content was always monetized through interruptive advertising, uh, now there's an opportunity to uh, monetize all forms of content, not just straight selling content with uh, live video sales, which become uh, a much cooler way to generate uh, um, money from an audience through a, a direct exchange of value through a transparent transaction um, where people are not just purchasing for the items but purchasing for that sense of connection um, uh, to the creator the streamer the retailer who are um, uh, who are making the broadcast so it becomes a form of interactivity um, it's a uh, uh, We've already seen how powerful those direct connections can be to um, to move product and create those new connections. And uh, uh, probably the most important factor is once audiences um, get a get into this experience and can actually feel that real time interactivity happening, feel that joy of, um, of feeling uh, that sense of connection. Uh, with the streamer, the vendor, they're not going to want to go back. So if I, if I were to boil it down to one thing, it's going to be like, and we've seen this in our first few shows, once uh, uh, people start that 
get start getting that feeling of, of, of that those real direct exchanges of value with the vendor um, it, it, it's more than just the joy of shopping which which is still there it's the joy of, of connecting uh, the joy of participating and uh, um, that means that it, it's going to go beyond um, QVC and, and and become uh, a standard part of, of the the way that live stream formats become sustainable um, through revenue generation. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, and are we seeing though a longevity? Is have audiences in China um, kind of adopted it, and are people looking forward to streams now? And is like what what what's the growth looking like? for this? Because I know it is nascent, um, but yeah, how does that look like going forward? The growth in, in China has been absolutely exponential. Um, I think we have a slide that shows 17% uh, uh, of all uh, e-commerce sales went through live streaming in China in, in 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. That's exponential growth and it's expected to continue to grow. And you can see the amount of product that was purchased through live video selling is, you know, over over a hundred billion dollars in one year. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. And I think it, to be honest, it's only scratching the surface because um, what we're seeing in China is, is a new breed of influencer and um, that that is is trained and understands this power of conversational commerce. Um, but we haven't even put these tools into the hands of storytellers yet. And how much more exciting does it get when it's not just tuning in for that live shopping experience, but it's tuning in for content where uh, the uh, the live shopping is a part of the interaction. It's a part of the this next generation of um, formats that uh, truly bring audiences in as actors within the show. And, and, and purchasing those items become um, a way for them to, to really act as a, a part of a production. So uh, I, I think we're just scratching the surface here. On that note, though, of having um, audience interact, Brittany, you have uh, experience with this. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Brittany has um, co-founded The Mom Economy, and she hosts Shop Mom Saturday. Um, and on there, there's multiple different, there's a variety of stores that come on. Um, how have you seen, Brittany, the audience interaction um, with the, the store owners? Is there Are the relationships starting to be built? Is there an authentic connection there? What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. First off, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you guys for giving me this opportunity. Um, the Stage 10 is definitely part of the mom economy family now because you've really given a nonprofit like us, a, a small nonprofit based in Miami, Florida, the tools to expand and provide our programming now on a global scale. So I just wanna say thank you all for, for your continued support. Um, Stage 10 and the live commerce experience has been crucial to our nonprofit. We um, do a lot. So one of our biggest campaigns is focused on mother owned businesses and they have all online shops and they are looking to broaden their reach and expose their brand. And when we were doing our first shop mom event is what we call it, where we encourage our audience to shop mom right before Mother's Day, we had to pivot from having an in-person traditional retail event to a fully virtual event. And what we were scared about was not having the full senses of a part of the process. And we didn't think we were going to be able to get the sales that we were used to from the last three years of having in-person events. So when we did this shop mom live commerce experience, we were really blown away by the results and the audience engagement where they were stepping into this room and we were, we were promoting it as like Instagram meets QVC. And it really gave our mother owned businesses this platform to not only share their story, but to talk about the products and answer questions in real time. Um, so I really think that live commerce is something that consumers are easily adapting to, as well as gravitating. Like you go to, nobody's going to, <laughs> to the stores anymore. They're trying right. to find 
opportunities to really learn brands in a different way. Right, right. And, and, and something beyond the store experience is the connection to the brand behind the scenes, the creators of it. Um, and so given that a lot of your, your, the, the stores that are on there are the creators themselves, um, what does it look like from the creator side, the, the, the store owner side? What are they doing to, to connect with their audience? What kind of shows are they hosting? Um, can you let me know a little bit more about what that looks like from, from their perspective? Yeah, they're getting really creative. Um, mothers like to drink. So sip and shops <laughs> have been okay. really successful. Um, <laughs> after hours, you know, after 9 p.m., inviting moms to come and just learn. It's, it's really community building is what they're focusing on. And then the sale is, the sales are just coming in. So it's building those authentic relationships. And um, you're right, it's the storytelling, letting people know about the brand, things like where the, the proceeds are going to products, the, the investment that the businesses are making, like those are the things that consumers want to know in addition to the products that they're selling. Right, right, right. Um, so, so, so as you're saying, so it's not just, you know, pitching a product. It's not, it's not just, um, you know, someone just listing off the, the features of, of a thing. Um, but what other kind of show ideas are people doing? Um, what, so the sit mom thing is cool. Um, are there other show ideas though, that like someone could have besides just, um, you know, the, the simple QVC pitch style? Yeah, I mean, I can share something on the mom economy, economy side that we're looking to put together for a Mother's Day campaign. Um, so nonprofits traditionally host a lot of silent auctions and um, we want to have a, a loud auction. We don't want it to be silent. And we're playing around with what that looks like, bringing in different influencers and community to just help promote um, the, the mother owned products, but also fundraise awareness for parental leave, which is one of our um, big missions here at the mom economy. Um, what we've noticed is when you have the relationship piece and the loyalty build in and there's influencers and mother owned brands and they're inviting their audience, we've seen the potential, the, the sales also have a higher average per order. So, um, we're looking at ways to do that and to have more programming for yeah. um for that yeah okay 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 that's awesome um okay dave what's your take on it uh are people oh, so 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 Brittany has said people who do more than just that the pitch have been more successful um i, what kind I of totally shows agree have, i mean what kind uh, of shows have I, seen? I, well uh, I think that we're we're just at the at the beginning, but I definitely envision a world where people are making shows that, uh, as as Britt points out very wisely, that just aren't just about selling; they're about starting a, a conversation with the audience. So that whole idea of conversational commerce and and how the the real key to success in these um, uh, in, in these broadcasts is, is to make sure you know that you're on that two-way medium and that you're in a discussion with the audience and it's it's not a straight presentation it's a um it's a two-way interaction uh and once you realize that then this whole world of opportunity to uh create new content formats uh come into play content formats where the sales uh of products enhance the content or integrated directly into the content in a gamified way versus uh, just being um, a, a straight pitch of the item. Um, there's still lots of room for that. And, and, and you know, like when, when we, we worked with Brit on the mom economy, it was wonderful to see these mom entrepreneurs Nerves uh, connecting directly uh, with their consumers, and, and that connection was was definitely driving sales, and it felt really authentic and wonderful. Uh, but then I also think about a future where um, you know shows are built around uh, moving product in, in fun, gamified ways. So you know, just to come up with some wild examples, like what if you had yeah, yeah. 
the the um, what if it was like the Iron Chef, and you know how they unveil uh, an ingredient that people need to cook with? What if you had two salespeople going head to head, and they unveiled a product, and then they they had ten minutes to sell that product to the audience, and the the salesperson who sold the most in the ten minutes, um, you know, wins or or gets a prize? I mean, that's a silly idea, but you start to see how. Um, you can build selling into the content, uh, even if it's not a, all about selling. Uh, so, so that's that's really exciting to me. And then I think you know it, it's always the same with these um, uh, uh, platform technologies that that, en that enable new styles of content. That we're certainly going to be surprised with the cool ideas um, uh, uh, retailers and storytellers come up with to. Um, uh, take advantage of this new technology. Right. Um, there's there's so many possibilities, and, and and that's really what our mission is here: is to give a really flexible way um, for for creators, retailers, brands, and media companies to uh, create new formats where the audience is a part of the show, and and where um, uh, moving product is. is is an integrated part of the content and a way to make the uh, shows as sustainable, and we've seen it over and over again in the in the uh, early experiments we've done uh, that people aren't necessarily just only buying um, to receive the product; they're buying to uh, be an active participant in the show, and that opens up some really interesting possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's an interesting thing, um, Brett. I had seen. Um, from a reel that one of the stores was a chocolate shop and people were commenting about like what chocolate bars they'd like to make and the different types of things like that. Um, that's really cool. Um, have yeah, you seen, the, hey, have you yeah, seen, no, how the, have you seen uh, the audience start to come back and started to be more involved and has that helped like the, the owners themselves in terms of, you know, like thinking of new products or giving, like, is there also then um, incentives for the audience to come back, and are the owners, you know, creating products specifically for these live, uh, these live sessions? Absolutely, and that's exactly what I was going to say. Is the more um, control you give to mm -hmm. the audience, the better the experience is, and the more bought in they get. So if they're able to create these bundles in real time and be part of the conversation, that's where we've seen some of our biggest success. So going to the coffee shop, the, the chocolate factory, they showcased a bunch of different chocolate. They asked the audience to kind of piece together this bundle and then they sold it um, in real time right there. So that was a really great experience of how live commerce can make it feel exclusive, this limited edition, once in a lifetime opportunity right here right now and it's just um really helpful for, for sales I'm, I'm playing on that i mean i think it helps people feel connected to both the vendor and the product to, to see it where it's being made like that that was so cool when i was watching that is like uh that's so neat to see how those chocolates are produced or where they're produced and you know it makes it even more exciting to uh, uh to buy them so I, I totally agree on that note, um, could we see an example? Um, I think we have a store connected already. And so everyone at home, um, this is actually the Rosie player. Um, and so you'll be able to see if you're watching it on Rosie, if you're on YouTube right now, uh, head over to playrosie.com slash live commerce. Um, and our Rosie player, you'll be able to test out the interactive features. We're going to now show what it looks like to have a shop on there. Um, right. You know, you can buy some products. Um, and so Rita, that's a great, great opportunity for me to, to give a little uh, explanation of how we do this, because I think that's important for, for the, the listeners. So one of the things that really makes our, our uh, Stage 10 platform special is we give the opportunity to the director. So right now, Josh, our, our um, head of uh, customer success, is operating the studio and, and, and uh, directing this webinar. But we give them the opportunity to bring a... a um, uh, an e-commerce buy now opportunity and as an asset 
within their live show. So what do I mean by that? I mean, the same way uh, in a traditional production environment, you could bring in an asset like a graphic overlay or a video clip or something that's always been a part of uh, the production experience. With Stage 10, we built it so you could bring in those interactive elements, including the Buy Now buttons, um, as an asset within your show and take it live to the audience at just the right time. So Josh has the ability, as he's directing the show, just as he's able to switch between a, a single shot of me and, and this double shot of, of me and Brit, uh, he can bring in the e-commerce opportunity and give you guys a chance to actually buy some of the cool stuff from Mom Economy um, uh, at the exact right time in the show. So uh, um, that's pretty special and pretty unique. Like We actually have two ways to do live e-commerce on the Stage 10 platform. Uh, we have an app that lets anyone go live as easily as making a video call. But it's super unique for us uh, to be able to put these e-commerce e e elements and these buy now opportunities uh, into the asset tool belt of, of producers and, and creators. So, so that, that way they can really start to build it into the show and bring it live to the audience at the right time and, and um, uh, be able to apply their their um, uh, production techniques to these next generation of truly interactive assets, whether it be a buy now opportunity or, or other interactions like like a vote or a game show element. Uh, that's really what Stage 10 is built for, is to create these next generation, real time, um, interactive uh, uh, broadcasts um, at, where the audience can can be an active participant in the show. And and another good thing to note is is it is real time, and I, you, you may not be able to tell, but it gets a little more obvious when you get into a conversational commerce broadcast that um, uh, that that stage tens. A player, which you're watching if you're at playrosy.com slash live uh, commerce, uh, Stage 10's player has under a half a second of latency. So that means you can be in one of these conversational commerce experiences and someone could ask you a question about the product and you could um, uh, respond directly to them in real time. So it feels like you're in a conversation. It feels like you're in the same room uh, uh, um, as the uh, as the the uh, customers or, or, or the uh, participants. Okay. Okay. Um, so for everyone at home, we have the um, product up already. Um, Brittany, it's the tawdry mom's pretties gift set. Um, so as an example, would you like to tell us who this is made by and, and what this is? Yeah, absolutely. So Tawdry is one of my favorite brands that we work with. They um, create handcrafted jewelry. <laughs> in the I'll heart check of Miami. Away. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, in the heart of Miami. And what's amazing about this all-female team is that they always give back and they work with a lot of different organizations such as the mom economy. So a percentage of sales goes to our parental leave grant. And our biggest thing that we always share with our audience, especially that it's coming so close to Mother's Day um, here in the US, that what better way to celebrate Mother's Day than to give a gift that supports mother owned businesses. Um, so this set is the perfect way to do that. The set is both um, the earrings and the necklace, is it? Correct, it yes. Yeah, it's just a classic set. Um, you can go um, to Tadri.com and she has a bunch of different like personalized, but this is just a classic um, kind of staple set that she sells. And it's only, um, the combos only featured on this live commerce platform. It wouldn't you wouldn't be able to buy it off her website because she created it specifically for you all today. Okay, so I, okay, and then I imagine then um, it's at a little bit of a discount, like rather than buying them just individually. You could say that. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That's okay. <laughs> so right. So people are starting to see incentives to tuning in, and that's awesome that they. They get to see this other side of um, of the brand that that I would say that right now, where in a pandemic people are isolated, they are consuming content all through like social media. All we see is what uh, a brand puts out there, but all the brands start to kind of look the same when your social media feed is just saturated. Like 
Um, I know for me, like I've started getting disengaged um, for when I look through my feed, like if it's an ad, I have no idea what I've, I would have been seeing, what have, what's been advertised to me in the last week or two. Um, but then, so how do you start to incentivize people to, um, to, to, to start tuning in? Like um, what, what, what would make them c come away from, um, you know, Instagram or Facebook to come onto your website to, to, to see this? Uh, I, I I wouldn't mind uh, taking a crack at that one. Um, yeah. It's it's truly that that experience of feeling like um, you're a part of the content instead of leaning back and, and watching it. And uh, we've went in some of the live commerce shows we've done, um, and I'll talk more about that later when we get into some examples. When people come over to our player and they start to experience the the conversational commerce, they don't go back to watch the rest on on the social networks where there can be a twenty second delay where they have no way to directly interact uh, or or converse with the streamer. Um, it, it's so much more um, authentic and real and and and, and, uh, and wonderful. Wonderful to to experience the content uh, um, in in a two way format on, on the two way medium. Uh, we also help to turn those uh, transactions into interactions because uh, you'll notice that when someone makes a purchase, we actually will bring out a shout out overlay. I don't know if we have them active right now, but but we have the yeah, option to bring out. A, oh, awesome! So when someone makes a purchase, we bring up a shout out overlay that actually thanks people on screen. And uh, that's an, a really cool feeling to see your name on the on the broadcast. And we also encourage the vendor or the streamer to thank the buyer by name on the on the show, and and that encourages more people to buy. And we learned that from um, you know our early work with live video transactions. We were actually doing a lot of um, uh, uh, streamathons and and tipping and donations broadcasts. In fact, I think we brought in 15 million for charity uh, through Stage 10 over the last uh, uh, few months or you know year and a half or something like that. Um, and and what we learned from doing that is when you know someone would make a donation and then the 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 uh, whoever was you know on exactly or on TV uh, whenever the the um, person mentions the uh, uh, thanks the buyer by name, or in this case, the, the person who was donating, way more people would donate because yeah. it feels like you're connected to, to, to the content. So, so we, we brought some of those techniques and, and if the whole, uh, to, our, to our live video e-commerce system. And if the, whole, if the holy grail of live streaming is be interactive with your audience, it's, it's pretty awesome that them sending you money actually uh, counts. See, this is the, the authentic side of live streaming that you don't see necessarily with, you know, studio made content is, you know, these are real people, they're in their homes, they're um, just like you, like they have kids, they, they take their kids to school. Um, this is yeah, that's, that's a really cool example of just having people come up. Um, and I've been told actually that the buy button is working. So people, you are like free to buy the jewelry set there. Um, and it won't take you away from the stream. That's an integrated checkout. It's not going anywhere. Um, it'll be up throughout the whole stream. So yeah, feel free to, to, to test it out, try it. And if you actually like the, the, the jewelry, um, go for it. It's awesome. Um, and you know who you're supporting. Um, but actually, so, so you, you, Dave, you had mentioned some results there, um, and mm -hmm. some shows that you've also uh, have worked on. Um, yeah. How about, yeah. Could you provide some more, you know, um, shows that Absolutely. you've done and the results from those shows? Absolutely. So, um, it's been really exciting. So, uh, uh, uh Josh, you want to bring up the, the slide with some of the, the numbers and I can talk them through. Uh, we actually, uh, you know, we, we, the, the mom economy is actually the first ever real broadcast we did with um, live video e-commerce. And I'll let Britt speak more to that. But I'll, let me talk about a couple of the other uh, um, Stage 10 partners who uh, jumped on to the live e-commerce bandwagon and some of the results they saw. So American Public Media, um, they've, they uh, have been doing experiments with live video commerce with us and really saw amazing results. Um, as you can see, they, they saw a 1,500% sales increase. Um, they invited, they took the approach of inviting a select group, of, I think of 5,000 of their followers to um, 
uh, come and experience this uh, live video commerce um, broadcast. And 80% of the audience turned out. Um, and then we also saw a conversion rate, which was truly incredible, like 7% uh, um, of all the audience members who showed up uh, made a purchase. I think the average cart size was something like 70 bucks. We were selling out products and, and having to, to move to new ones. It was, it was really cool um, uh, to see. Uh, and then another interesting example, you know, and they were, they were going to, to an adult contemporary audience for lack of a better descriptor. Uh, right. but we also did, did one with Atlantic records for a boy band called, uh, why don't we, and their audience was really teens and tweens. And that was really interesting to see that they also saw a 7% uh, conversion rate across um, uh, uh, their audience. So, so it, it, it was uh, different age groups, different target markets, different behavior sets, but, but still the same um, percentage of people were, were buying. The other thing that I think is really interesting about the Atlantic Records example is I mentioned that it was um, mostly teens and tweens who, who were, were uh, participating in the content. Um, but they were selling them CDs. And this is a really great illustration of people buying not just for the product, but for the experience of an interaction. Uh, because I guarantee you, most of those teens and tweens don't have CD players. Like, we are in the year 2021. <laughs> and they were still buying them. I think we peaked out at 115 purchases per minute. Um, so that really was exciting to see as well. And the engagement level was through the roof, uh, as you can see on that stat. We were seeing like almost 4,000 chat messages per minute as well. So people were having such a good time. Uh, another thing that was really exciting to me, and remember I said that like what gives me the most confidence about this, you know, basically becoming the next big thing in terms of content formats was the reaction of the audience. So after the show, for days afterwards, there were still thousands of those teens and tweens hanging out uh, on our video player asking for more because the experience was so much fun for them uh, to have that true uh, ability to interact with the, with the talent and, and to feel like they're part of the show. That's incredible. Yeah, and, and, and exactly that, um, feeling that they're part of the show and, and continuing it on, and they're building their own community around it. Um, and so actually, in terms of building that community, then, um, Brittany, have you tried to manage that community then um, outside of the live streams, have you tried to set up, uh, or have people started to, I guess, come to the Shop Mom Saturday page? Like, um, and are you building like a community? Are these people from across the country coming together and, and even talking amongst themselves? Um, yeah, what's that community looking like? Yeah, so we've done a little bit of both. When we first did the Shop Mom Saturday event, um, we realized that we didn't want it to just be like this annual event that we had done right. in the past. So we've been creating kind of these moments. Uh, typically, like our community and our audience, we all use social media platforms to, you know, have conversations, do surveying and, and data polling. But like you mentioned before, social media has been very saturated and we've seen a drop of engagement in some of those platforms, just sending um, different communications. So we've been using smaller and intimate, more targeted groups to create these fun events and virtual experiences. And using the Stage 10 platform allows us to have this high level production, meeting all of these live e-commerce streaming capabilities that in an easy way. So um, we, we've just been seeing a great thirst for it and our audience continuing to ask for more. Um, so we will definitely be, you know, continuing to do this and not just having this as like a one-time thing. Right. Yeah, and I can, yeah, expand, yeah. I can expand on that a little to, uh, in talking about how we see the social platform still playing a role uh, in this. Uh, and so 
one of the things Stage 10 does very well is we have a built-in multi-streaming system, like a, a, we call a media gateway, where you can actually multi-stream the broadcast uh, uh, to up to 32 destinations across um, social on, on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Twitch, uh, LinkedIn Live, and if you have the correct permissions, Instagram Live and, and TikTok Live as well. And, and what that means is, uh, it gives you a way to immediately reach uh, your your existing following on social, to inform them that you're going live, and to drive them back to your to your own owned and operated site, to your storefront, where they get a better experience because they can interact with you in real time. They can purchase the items without leaving the broadcast, and that's super valuable. Um, to to uh, uh, our partners because it means they can start to own their audience again. They can go as far, you know, as it grows to creating their own 24-7 direct-to-consumer channels uh, where they can be selling product day and night, um, uh, having, you know, different shows and product launches and, and, and even repeating content uh, because Stage 10 allows you to play pre-recorded videos as well uh, where you can still be selling the items. So, you know, we, we envision a future where uh, there's a network of channels um, and, and where retailers can become the next great content companies. And, and, and uh, that's really exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. That the, that the retailer and the brand now owns that relationship and connection between them and the customer. That no longer are you relying on, well, you can still have influencers, but you don't have to rely on them so much. You don't have to rely on third party uh, media companies and, and influencers. Um, People actually want that, though, because like that's a great um, point. Like the the yeah. ability to go beyond where we are now, where you still need to make sure you're bringing an audience out. Like as this grows and and audiences um, know where to go to discover this content, uh, right. that becomes less and less of a thing. And then you don't need to attach like someone with 35 million followers to be your host because people know that there there's something going on. Um, so, so it's just going to get more and more powerful as as the uh, these formats get more established. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I agree. I like that. Britt, what's next for Mom Economy? Um, any plans, uh, ideas? So much. So we are getting ready to jumpstart our new season um, of programming. We are hosting this amazing series called Mom Camp. So okay. while moms right now are diving into finding summer camp solutions for their children, we're offering a solution for moms and mother-owned businesses to help take their events to the next level. So we will be we have a summer series that we're doing, and um, we will be using Stage Ten to take that virtual programming from good to great, make it interactive, and not just a, a boring Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, actually, uh, just now on the screen, we had um, snippets from that Chop Mom Saturday. So for people who were curious, didn't know what that looked like, um, uh, that's what that was. But then also feel free to go on her website and you can check out things there. It's, um, I believe, shopmomeconomy.com. Themomeconomy.com. And then you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook at The Mom Economy, all spelled out oh, together. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, okay, um, on that then, any advice for businesses starting out, um, businesses trying to get into the space as well? Uh, so much advice. I would say okay. that starting off, um, I think that everybody wants to, like, especially when it comes to social media and audience building, they always want to build an audience fast. And I think that that's dangerous. And sometimes um, too much of an audience too quickly um, isn't as impactful and you'll see less engagement. I would focus on taking your time, really listening to feedback, as well as doing a good job of storytelling and featuring the things that you're doing right now, even the most mundane tasks, like for the chocolate factory, they, them sourcing their materials, that ended up being a topic that was really important for people to see that they didn't know, and they do it every day. So don't right. try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's Dave, smart. how would you speak to that? 
Yeah, I mean, I saw the question that just came up, and and you know, in terms of advice on, on where to get started, um, uh, I, I think that that you you want to talk to your start with your existing customer base, like uh, as, as Britt was wisely saying, like go live, try it out, be casual with it, be conversational. Don't um, think of it like you're you're producing the Academy Awards. Think of it like you're um, going on to um, have a Tupperware party with your customers, you know, or you know, hear what they have to say. Ask them, ask them questions, and then wait for them to answer it and respond in real time. And they'll start to to get the feeling of it, and they'll tell their friends, and and they'll come as well. Um, I think that's part of it. I think the uh, and then as it grows. Um, you can begin to think of, hey, what's a cool format for us to do? Like, do we want to, you know, go to where it was made and, and show that? Do we want to bring on one of our existing users to do a testimonial or to say, you know, like maybe you're maybe you're selling a, a beautiful dress and and you bring on two or three people who bought the dress and you ask them, you know, what do you like about it? When when it where, what uh, uh, to what kinds of events do you wear these things to? Um, you know, bring bring your customers right on screen and, and talk to them about the the experience of the product. Um, uh, and, and really keep it simple, like, like um, because you're able to see the questions people are asking you in real time directly through our interface, um, that makes it really easy to get started and, and just ask them to ask you questions and then answer those questions. And then you have something to talk about and, you, and you're immediately uh, right off the top embracing the, the magic of, of this kind of, uh, of two-way broadcasting. You're in a conversation with your audience. And, and from there, you know, you can start to get fancier and think of cool formats and, hey, how can we gamify this? And like, hey, the 10th buyer gets it free or if 50 people buy, we'll give everyone a 20% discount. There's lots of fun stuff you can think of. But, but I, if you were to say how, how to get started, just go live and, and start a conversation with your audience because it's something everybody's used to doing. It's that same experience when someone comes into your, your brick and mortar storefront and, and, and you get to really engage with them and say, hey, you know, you're buying this jacket. Are you going uh, to use it for hiking or are you going to use it to go to the clubs? And then you can kind of direct them in the right way. Uh, all right, that right. becomes possible in an e-commerce environment when you add li live uh, two-way video to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, so wait, how did you? So, so I don't think people know. So, Stage Ten has been around for I think since Dave. When when have, when have we? When was Stage Ten founded? Uh, Stage Ten has been around since uh, 2015. We've always been on this mission to make possible the next generation of uh, uh, two-way content. The vision was a little bit ahead of the uh, technological right. infrastructure of the internet. Uh, how did it's, you it's only been. This? Um, uh, well, I definitely came from a, a, a long background of, of um, uh, internet communications. So, like, I, I was already experimenting with the bulletin board systems in the mid '80s, for example, and starting to see the power of that. And I combined that um, uh, uh, understanding of, of what was coming with the internet uh, with with my interest in the entertainment business and, and with uh, television. I actually went to radio and television school and it was kind of those, um, that intersection of those interests as long with, with probably a couple of future visioning sessions, who knows, you know, um, uh, with, with uh, other crazy people where we're just going nuts with brainstorming about what is possible in the future. Um, it takes a little bit of science fiction thinking to, th to think that far ahead, but it's also not that great a leap, you know. Um, uh, I think people have, have been talking about selling products against content for a long time. I think where maybe I brought a unique perspective was to, to be interactive with your audience, you need to be in a live environment. And it goes even further than that, that not, not only does it have to be live, but it has to be uh, uh, in, re in near real time so, so the interactions make sense. So if, 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 you, if you're always thinking about interactivity as like choose your own adventure and, and you, know, you, you pick this and it'll take you in that direction, um, that's really limiting. But as soon as you can get the audience and the streamer into the same time zone and as soon as you give the streamers the ability to 
treat the interactive elements as assets within their show, then this whole new world opens up and kind of the, the promise of, of, of the medium is finally fulfilled. For too long, the internet's been treated as, as a uh, distribution and a marketing medium where it, and it, it is uh, its own medium and it's going to um, change media forever. Right, right, right. Actually, okay, um, that's interesting. So, but people might think that that makes sense now because of the pandemic, people are forced to stay home. Um, what does it look like? And I'll ask Britt this question first or, or have her answer first is like, is there going to be a hybrid strategy? Like what are, what are stores going to do? I imagine some people will still keep a physical store, Britt, how are you going to, uh, tackle this? Will some of your, um, businesses have physical store, physical stores still, or what's this hybrid or how's this transition going to look like for you? Yeah. Many of the mother owned brands that we already work with didn't have traditional brick and mortar stores. They're small right. businesses. These are side hustles that they were kind of jump starting. And really this land, this virtual landscape just helped um, grow their business at a, a faster pace. Um, I did have a handful that had brick and mortar stores and they don't have them any longer. They're focusing on this e-commerce strategy and I think that that a hybrid approach is going to be, it's going to work for some brands, probably the larger brands, but I would mm, also say right. that there is this community retail movement that's happening where investing in yeah. small owned businesses is really something that people are making a priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it challenging for some of them to go straight to, to e-commerce? Um, what, were there any challenges for, for um, any of the, the side hustles and then scaling? Because like now that you're on the Internet, now you have a global audience. What were the challenges from going from, you know, cottage industry to to being on the Internet? Yeah, I think that uh, mompreneurs are hustlers and they have a lot of obstacles that they have to overcome on their day to day life. So e-commerce technology was something I think pretty easy because it's ever changing. And when you think you're a master of it, guess what? You're not. <laughs> and you got to dig deeper and you have to learn new things and an algorithm changes and you have to relearn what it looks like. So I think it's just a mindset that they had to kind of um, ingrain in their businesses. And you see that it's something that I think what sets um, women owned businesses apart is it's just part of their DNA. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. Um, Dave, what would you say from working for, with larger companies, um, challenges for larger companies going live, tr transitioning from physical? Um, are, are people still concerned that, you know, they might invest into this now, but it might not be there. It might not be as important in, let's say, six months from now. No, I think we've seen uh, a real, I hate to use the uh, kind of trade phrase paradigm shift, but I think, I think uh, we're starting to see a, a real understanding among the big retailers and media companies that, that um, uh, this is here, it's coming. Uh, I heard even today in a meeting that, that uh, the majority of retailers right now have it in their KPIs um, uh, to try live video commerce. Um, and to to start to see it and what gets me excited is we know what the because we, we've been ahead of the game on that and, and enabling retailers to do it very early we know that they're going to see the results and it's going to become more and more uh, a, a huge part of um, how they, how they uh, drive revenue, how they connect with their consumers, how they build communities around their brand so so I think it uh, we're already seeing like that um, that uh, shoot up on the hockey stick, but but I, I, this, the limit is really high here. Um, it's it's uh, it's really exciting to, to to see how big brands are starting to think about this. And it took them a while to jump into the to you know if you think about it like a traditional retail chain, for example, it took them a while to to fully embrace e-commerce. And now that you're seeing their revenue on the e-commerce is is equal to in many cases or greater than what's happening in brick and mortar. Uh, this is just the next step where um, you're going to see that that 
uh, the live video and that that two-way communication with the customer becomes uh, an integral part of driving that e-commerce revenue and once they start they won't be able to get back and it's not going to be an option um, for any retailer who wants to um, you know uh, um, continue to have a thriving business they're going to need to find a way to get into this and, yeah. and and as we were saying the easiest way is just think about it like you're chatting with your customers uh, in, in a brick and mortar store. It's kind of like brings the best of bo both worlds. Uh, yeah. uh, you get to open up the whole world market. You get to have your shop open 24-7, uh, but you still can talk to your customers, which is which is really, really exciting. To give people an idea of what Dave's talking about, um, Josh, want to queue up the interactive reel? So Dave has talked about a fair bit of features here, um, and it might sound abstract for now, but um, it's worth taking a look at, and we'll play that here uh, now. Um, and then while that's playing, let's have audience, you know, this is the last five minutes. Um, keep those questions coming in. Um, last chance to ask Dave any questions. Um, and let's, 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 let's see what else that you guys are thinking of. Yeah. So, so, so that's that. Those were some of the shows that Stage Ten has done so far. Um, people such as um, American Public Media, Atlantic Records, um, Goop, um, and and so so. I'd be happy to answer next? Aaron's question here. Oh, yeah, um, I see that. I see one on the screen. Uh, so, yeah, I think using your your existing social followings. Um, is absolutely a great way to, to get moving. Um, not only can you multi-stream the actual broadcast and inform everybody you're live, uh, and, and then you know po post as we, we give you an overlay to post to send people back to your site to, to watch and, and interact and, and, and make purchases. Um, uh, and then we always recommend that you would you know maybe say that on air as well, like we did here. If you're watching on YouTube, maybe you want to come to uh, play Rosie slash Live Commerce to to actually interact, and then they'll stay there because that's a much more fun experience. But you can also use the the social networks uh, and Instagram specifically to your question, Aaron, um, to to promote the show. Like, there's no reason you can't go just on the Instagram Live app and say, hey, you know, on Sunday, we're going to do this really incredible interactive live video uh, sale where we're going to be dropping a special product. And, and you use the social networks the way you always have to, to, um, uh, to, to, to market the initiatives you're taking. Um, but just n now, um, the initiatives you're taking can actually be this new style interactive content. Yeah. Oh, this is too cool. I'm excited about this. So am I. Um, that's awesome, guys. Um, thanks for thanks for having thanks for being here um, and giving us your time and those insights. Um, any last thoughts? Any last ideas, tips, tricks? Uh, Dave first. Um, I would just say, like, reach out to us. Uh, this is all very new. We understand that. We don't expect you to 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 just take our our platform and go like. Reach out to us. We're going to be there. We'll support you. We just want to see as many people trying this as possible. Um, so, so don't hesitate to reach out. We have a team that's ready to um, help you with this, uh, to give you advice, training, support. Um, we want to see you be successful, and that's one of the things that's the most exciting for us. Is we're we're moving from a company that uh, um, was just charging people for technology to where we actually look at at our users now as partners. And, and it's in both our interests to get as many sales happening as possible, to um, uh, create as, as cool content as possible that get, makes a splash and, and gets people talking and going, how do they do that? So, so more people will go. So I think if there was one piece of um, advice on getting started, it would be just reach out to us. Uh, we've got a whole team of people here who are going to just jump right in and help you get started. And um, uh, I think that'll work out great for everybody. Yeah. On to you, Brett. Any last thoughts? Yeah. Don't hesitate and don't overthink it and over engineer is what I would say. Like jump in. And um, the biggest piece is authenticity for any brand. So if you can use this tool and just show your authentic self, 
you, the, the results will come with building community, with sales, a mixture of things, and just continue to push forward. I totally Appreciate agree with that. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. This has been a great hour. Um, I hope you guys have learned as much that I have um, about live commerce. Don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and yeah, thanks again, once again, for, for tuning in, guys. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Care, Thank guys. you both. It was really fun. Bye. Cheers. Appreciate it.